Good morning, this is Richard back at you. Today, it's another day, Precision Transmissions, busy, busy, busy. We got Trent pulling out a 4L60E four-wheel drive. We got Cody pulling out a 47 uh, Dodge. We got Annie, she's busy guarding the shop. So everybody's busy today. We got Teresa behind the camera and we got a lot of things going on. Right now we got Evan's beautiful Dodge Dually from here in Amarillo, uh, 06 model, two wheel drive, 5.9 diesel. He's had the tranny built before, I believe, or he bought it with one in there, I'm not for sure. Uh, but we're gonna go back through here and see if it's got billet shafts, stuff like that when we tear it down. I'm not sure the issue he was having. We do know the uh, overdrive, two wheel drive housing is cracked. Uh, we had to get one of them coming in. God, gosh, you don't wanna try to find one of them. Annie, come on. Come on, come on. She's slow as dripping water sometimes, guys, let me tell you. But anyway, we got uh, a lot of things to talk about when we do one of these units. A lot of things. We've got, come on, Annie. No, nope, you don't run. Come on, you get in here and lay down. She was gonna abandon ship on us, guys. <laughs> hey, this did have a code. Did it have a code in it, Teresa? Let me get back. Co eight six eight code in it. He said when he got it on the highway, it was throwing it in limp mode. Uh, P seventeen forty overdrive solenoid performance. TCC or overdrive solenoid performance. So anytime we get a vehicle in here, that, this is the first thing we do. We run a scanner on it, print it all out. That way we know where we're headed with the vehicle. So we could have possibly put a TC solenoid pack in this and, and got him going down the road. Who knows? But he wanted to look at this unit and see what he physically has before he starts doing things to it. Beautiful truck, beautiful well, truck. Plus the tail housing Yeah, plus the tail housing's cracked. And, but let me tell you, trying to find a tail housing, guys, for one of these, oh my gosh, two-wheel drive diesel, big seal. You're gonna pay when you get them, if you can find one. But anyway, we're gonna be doing a lot of things to this unit. We've got our Transtar complete overhaul kit here. Uh, we've got our new uh, kick down band. We've got our bushing kit. We've got our wide six tab washers. Now, uh, depending on what planets you have, you could have five tab, four tab, uh, just depending. We have our case uh, overdrive housing saver. We've got our filter high flow. We've got our new solenoids. We've got our bearing backing plate kit. We also, we got our four land uh, switching valves, four spool switching valve. Now, we've noticed when these start getting discolored and stuff like that, replace these things. Now, your Transgo shift kit will have you modify this valve uh, in the instructions, just remember that. Also, we're, we're a true believer in Sonex, guys. Uh, this uh, pressure regulator valve, uh, the bypass style that uh, lubes uh, and park in neutral, you can see the hole here, the hole here, it's got a check ball and spring in here. Uh, that's a full-time lube valve. And then you put their manual valve in there too. Now you just upgraded this tranny tremendously uh, in the lube circuit and stuff like that. But uh, we got your reverse band. We've got our overdrive sun gear. We've got our forward sun gear. We have our rear case support. Now, if you're going to have an early style that has a governor, you're not gonna put these plugs in here. If you have a late 46, 47 on up that does not have a governor, you're gonna be putting these plugs in the back here. There's two of them, pretty simple. We have our reverse drum. This always gets eaten up right through here and right through here because your cooler line flow, uh, if you have converter failure or anything like that, your cooler line flow is gonna put all the metal right in here and just wipe this out. Now we do have our governor pressure sensor, or excuse me, solenoid. We like to use the OEM on these if we can get away with it. Uh, if we're going really high pressure, you know, we might buy the aftermarket kit and do it, but we've got had good luck even with those in, on high pressure applications. Now we have our governor pressure uh, sensor here. And we have, um, a beautiful billet input drum and shaft here. Now we're not sure if we're gonna be putting this in there yet because we don't know if he's already got one. We're not sure if he's got aluminum planets, if he's got steel planets. We're gonna be looking at all that type of stuff. Now we did start upgrading our uh, Transgo kits. Uh, we started going from the other version to this one here. Uh, we've been getting the Dodge diesels uh, in now 300,000 miles, 400,000 miles on them. And we're starting to see a lot of wear in the valve body. Well, this uh, shift kit here comes with a lot of components to repair the valve body. Uh, your your uh, TV valve bushing or valve and spring. I mean, there's a ton of stuff where this kit here 
uh, is one that we're going to be starting using in all of our Dodges. So just, we're just getting them with so many miles on them now that everything's just wore plumb out. And then, of course, we're going to top it off uh, with this beautiful ATS pan. Beautiful ATS pan, guys. We, when you put one of these in there, uh, if you just, just up the mileage, up the filter life, I mean, just up to everything. And then, of course, my beautiful wife, Teresa, got me one for my truck. Thank you very much. We can't wait to get it in here and get this on for it. Now, it's got a 6L, or excuse me, a 68 RFE in it. So, and then, oh, it's just one after another after another. But anyway, we have a crack tail housing on this one. We went and pulled the unit out. It's just, it does have an aftermarket converter. It's got a billet backing, probably a single disc. He don't know whose it is. Now we do have one that we just did that uh, we just drained here. I'm gonna try to move it. Now you can see the backing plate on it compared to this style. They make uh, multiple styles. Now this I believe is a three clutch. This could be a single or it could be a three, depending on what they built, built it for, excuse me. Now also, if you get in here and look, the center of this flywheel right here is wore plumb out. I mean, this thing is wobbly, totally gone. If you get in here and look, I'm gonna put my glasses on real quick because I got a piece of trash in my eye this weekend doing honeydews. I have to blame it on Teresa. But anyway, you can see a crack here you can see a crack here. You can see a crack here. And there's one right here. This thing was fixing to shred. It was on the verge. So we don't know. This all this rust being on this converter like this, this has been going on from the, for this converter. So I don't know how that got wobbled out that bad like that. I've never never seen one that bad. So well let's get in here and see if we got any goodies. Now, like I say, I don't know if this is a triple disc, single uh, billet, or, or what. See quite a bit of wear on the, the hub right through here. It's kind of weird how these wear. They'll get wide footprint here, and then as you turn it, the footprint gets narrow and gets smaller. Now, that tells you there how much flex that this flywheel was moving to let this move in that pump bushing like that. Now, we've seen them. Even with billet uh, flywheels come in with these Dodges turned up with, you know, 1,700 foot-pounds of torque, whether you got a billet flywheel and billet converter or not, we see flex. I mean, we see it, so. And this does have a Smarty Junior on it, he said. Oh, does it really? Yeah. So, that tells you, a torque monster. Now anytime you take your overdrive housing bolts out and you're putting it back together, always double seal your bolts. Put some sealing on your threads and on the, the head of the bolt right here when you tighten it down. If you don't, you can uh, uh, leak fluid just around the threads because these uh, threads do go physically on the bottom into the cavity. You see some here you don't have to, but the bottom ones definitely. I just make it a habit of doing all of them. That way I don't have no issues. You can see here where our overdrive snap rings at. Have a little leakage around here too. Now these are little bevel Torx style bolts and this plate's got a, a chamfer in it too for them. So We like to, a lot of times we don't even use that gasket. We'll put some sealer on there and seal on it on here and just seem to, if they're in the oil field or something out there and, this truck's never gonna be on dry land again, and we definitely don't want any type of leaks on this unit. Now you can get down in here and look. That whole, that whole snap ring groove's wide. I mean, it's, that whole snap ring groove's really, really wide. Let me see if I can move this around. You see that down in there, how, how much that's moving in that groove? Yeah. Now that bearing, or the spacer right here that goes in the back right here, will take and lift everything forward. And it'll tighten up all your clearances through here. So even if it's not wore out, 
putting that in there stops all that end play on that bearing right there. So that's that's a must on every one you do. So. Okay, now we have our wire snap ring here. So that's just for assembling, that's nothing. If you left it out, uh, you could be in trouble trying to put it together. But now here we go, we can see that somebody's been into this unit now. We can see an aftermarket backing plate to add an extra clutch to your overdrive, an extra clutch of steel. Anytime that's like that, let me go grab original one, Trace, I'll be right back. Now you can see this is an original one and here how they took and shaved it off. I don't know if they, I wish I could take a few of these to my machine guy and see if he could do that for me, but I don't know if they make this out of a different material and make it stronger or not to keep it from bowing. But what they do is they machine that down and then they leave the, the wavy snap ring out down in here uh, to give it room for that extra clutch. See, there used to be two snap rings down in there, now there's just one and that goes like that where before there'd been two snap rings and then this plate. So it's a good upgrade. The only thing that I've seen on these right here, when we do this, uh, when in the tow haul mode, we've had downshift uh, issues with them, having a harsh downshift only in tow haul mode. So in overdrive mode, it doesn't do it. Third gear mode, it doesn't do it. But if you got the tow haul button on and you come to a stop, we always get that little harsh downshift. So we kind of quit doing it. We still had good success uh, leaving that one clutch out. Now, you can see here where this crack is right through here on this housing. They've put a bunch of silicone and I believe some JB Weld because that stuff's hard as a rock. But we can't repair these. We've tried welding them up and stuff and it's just a train wreck. They end up cracking back. You can't just get in there and clean it out. It's, it's pretty tough. You know, I might try to spend a day on this one here to try to save it sometimes since these things are getting so expensive. Now your bushing kit will not come with this bushing. You have to order it special because of the, it's a diesel housing, great big old uh, yoke on the drive shaft. So you can see that there's pretty much wore out too. So, set that aside real quick. We got our overdrive piston here. Now this piston here applies the overdrive clutch and pushes off the overdrive direct clutch. Okay. And what we got here, let me get this uh, screwdriver. What we got is on this piston here, we got some really shortcut seals. This almost feels like it's got an additive in it. really really shortcut seals your new ones will be the exact same way so there's no upgrade to that part of it now I did want to show you guys something though in this overdrive section here what we have a call what we call an overdrive direct clutch now this training here being that the year of it is it could have a two a single-sided clutch in it just like your 4L60 EZ packs that we put in you put 14 in, but they're single sided. There's only clutches on one side of the clutch instead of having a, a clutch with both sides and a steel in between. Clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel. See. Now, Dodge did this just for a short period of time and they got away from it. That's why our overhaul kit comes with that to retrofit it back to the original style. So I just wanted to show you guys that if you've never seen it before. If you tear one down, you find that. What I do is I stack my overdrive or direct clutches up and steels up on the bench. I stack that system up on the bench. And if they're level, 
and they feel good. I mean, if, if the new system's just barely a little taller, that's fine. But let me tell you guys, they made multiple thicknesses of these clutches and these steels. And I mean, they made multiples and they made multiple housings depths on this snap ring groove right here uh, to add more clutches or less clutches. Your gas snap ring will be lower in the drum. Your diesel always to the top. But that don't mean the person that was in it before put the right clutch pack back in that drum. If you look here, this is where you start really telling where your, if your clearances are, are right in here. It's on how high this piece right, this uh, piece right here comes off, off this. If you got more clutches in there, it's gonna be lower. There's a snap ring right here that can actually sling out uh, at high RPM. So this drums, I've only had one paper that give me identifications on the stacking of them from a nine clutch to a six clutch to a 10 clutch or whatever. And that's, I've, I've got it somewhere and I've, I don't know what I did with it. We cleaned the shop and things went everywhere. I do have my half inch wrench, excuse me. Now this here has a TV motor. You can see it bolts here and here and then sets down on top of your TV lever here. When you push on the gas pedal, the motor turns this lever, pulls it back, you let off the gas, the motor turns back. Uh, when they went to throttle by wire, they went to the TV motor style and got rid of the cable. Of course, you always want to look in here for any type of fluid in here. She looks wet. Yep, she's a little wet. Now your neutral safety switch here, they made multiple versions of these here. This is the latest version. A little lever piece in here uh, hits a little rooster cone and clicks it here, 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 or depending on where you have your shifter. See, we'll flip it over. Got tools everywhere today. Get to the back. That's some pretty red fluid though, let me tell you. Even though it's burnt looking fluid, it's got that pretty red color to it. Real dark color. Mm-hmm. Now we can tell here that this intermediate shaft is all original. It's not nothing special there. I'll get this out and look at it too. See what we got going. It don't look like it's a built shaft, but it's hard to tell. Pan looks really clean. So I don't know if it's just been serviced or anything like that. Really? New filter. Now we'll be putting a, when we put our ATS pan on here, it'll come with an extension and to get that filter off the bottom of the pan. Put it closer to the bottom, but off the bottom.
Now you said, well, being what the codes were, that it tells me that it had a physically electronic code. I think my table's starting to stretch, guys. We have been putting some use to this thing. I used to be pretty brand new when I, I started this with this table. So, well, we've had this table since 96, huh? 1996. We'll get in here and unlock our lock for our, uh, Governor Pressure's sensor. And then you can get in here and pull up on that and unlock your Governor Pressure solenoid. Now you can tell here this is a an aftermarket. It's not OEM just by looking at the adjustment screw right here. Your OEM ha is just a smooth cap. See that? Just a smooth cap. There's no screw in the middle. I like to use the OEM. I get better readings with it. Everything about it. Now your shift kit is going to, you're going to get your factory gasket, of course. This might have a shift kit in it because we do have signs of a shift kit right here even. So. This is your overdrive accumulator here. It does have a transgo kit in it. I can tell just by the springs. Got your piston. You got a Teflon ring here and here, and this one is bigger than this one. So don't get them mixed up. If not, you'll have a gap on the top. Plus we have our special little bolt here just to hold our linkage. Now you can see here your transgo kit supplied him with this here. Now we'll check here and make sure we have a bullet. Let's take that out of there real quick and see if it's been repaired there. Now we want to really look right through here too we see a lot of wear here we replace every one of these we do because this here is where your neutral safety switch comes in and runs on this plastic piece and it's just got a little shiny little tip there that pushes on this thing pretty hard i don't know why i don't wear it out faster but you can see a little bit of wear right through there we're starting to do it it wears down so far it'll hang behind here and start causing problems now also, we, anytime we do one of these, we come in here and we want to buff down this little tip right here on this parking piece right here. We found issues right through here. Once this wears a little bit, it makes it really hard to pull it out of park. So if you do just a little bit of buffing right there to take that little edge off, it helps a ton. Now we do have our transgo bullets, what you want to call it. There used to be a spring and a check ball right there, but once the check ball wears side to side, they give you this piece that way it uses the whole body of the surface in here to run smooth. And we do have a transgo manual valve here too, it looks like. Now you can see here where they did some modifications to the valve body. They, they grind it across here and here, and that's in the shift kit. So you just read that part of it and it'll tell you. Get down in here and see what type of tranny we have. The valve body will tell you, the plate will, and other places uh, in the valve body will tell you what you have too, but I can go straight to the valve body plate and look at it and tell me if I have a 47, 48. Because you don't know nowadays, these things have been so mixed up. Now these are your two alignment bolts here. We start these two first, pull it down to not snug, but just get everything lined up and then put all of our other bolts in here. Now this filter bolt, it looks just like this one here, but it goes right here, no filter. But uh, 
your trans or your ATS pan, you will not still will not use that bolt. It'll still stay right there. Now this little bolt right here is usually the shorter bolt. Now I've seen long ones here too, so you just never know what you're going to get until you start taking these things apart. Now you can see this little bushing right here. That's been installed. This has been as a new transgo plate here. There's some modifications you have to do. You can see a hole here where they drilled all the way through. Now this new updated shift kit that I got, uh, you don't have to drill this anymore. You just plug it here. The new top hat that comes here physically has a hole in it for the drain. So it sits on there like that. There's a hole in the middle now. Well, before they were they were draining the fluid out the side right here. Uh, that way that when the piston come up, it didn't try to catch the fluid on this surface here and, and collapse it inside the piston. That way the piston would move freely. So, but that's one step that you don't have to do. Now also, this kit here, you can make it uh, do some manual lock up and first gear and stuff like that, but we're not gonna be doing that for this gentleman. And we have a check ball here, a little tiny one. Now you can see here, uh, this is a, an aftermarket plate. Now we've been getting in here, I've, I scotch right all my plates. And this is why, this, this tranny has no valve body gaskets and it's a very high pressure transmission. Now if you look right here, this hole right here identifies it as a 48RE valve body. 47 will not have that hole right there. So this tells me this is a high pressure tranny right off the bat. Now we do have this hole here is going to be modified and this one here is going to be modified. It's going to tell you in your instructions. But every one of these plates are cut back, cut out this way, and then you have this roughness over here, guys. If you could grab this and feel this right here, there's such a lip around every place this thing's been stamped out. It's unreal. So when you tighten this down, there's physically, to me, there's no way this thing can set perfectly flat. You have to get in here. If you take a piece of scotch bright and you just come in here, and you scotch bite this plate, just like that. You would not believe how smooth this plate gets when you take all that off. I mean, it just smoothens it right up from, from here to here. You can't really see it, but when I take it over here and put it in my solvent and I, I polish this down, when I first start, it's really loud. And then when I get done, the scotch bite's just smooth. So it takes all that rough edginess off even come in here, take your file or even take your scotch bright and come in here and just make sure, mainly around the edges where you're bumping it and stuff like that, clean that all up really good, put it all back together, nice night and day difference. Because when we first started using a lot of these, uh, we were having issues with cross leaks and stuff. And I would, didn't figure out exactly what was going on, so I'd put the factory plate back on it, modify it. Uh, the way theirs was and use it that way. Well, once I started scotch spriting those plates down, that totally went away, totally went away. So anytime you get a shift kit plate, they're all stamped out from one side to the other. So this one side is always gonna be rough. You always wanna clean it up. So. Now you can see here too, they have this little bullet looking thing that sits down in here for your TV. You have all your check balls and your troughs and your third gear ball here. And that is part of a Transgo's kit. Now, I could get into a lot of stuff on this valve body that everybody needs to know when you're mixing Sonex and mixing Transgo stuff together, especially when it comes to the full loop circuit. Now, we use a ton of these and, and I just, from the grapevine, I talked to a lot of people. Um, Transgo has its own full-time loop circuit built into this spring and valve and these little retainers right here. You can see these 
that and that, and this little center spring right here. This little spring right here is a floater spring, and it allows this valve at idle to kick back just enough to open up that circuit right there. Can you see that right here, Teresa? Let me. Now this, this spring here is what we, I call like a lube floater spring. It lets this valve float back just enough to let that land right here, right here, peak through that edge right here. Just like that. Just barely like that, right? Well, if, if that does that, and you put your Sonex full-time lube valve in here, now what do you got going on? You got two lube circuits happening. We don't want two lube circuits at idle when this truck's sitting at 220 degrees pulling a big gooseneck trailer. So, and, and what happens was it'll physically drop line pressure and, and we possibly could uh, burn up clutches or and stuff like that, and that's not what we want to do. So, what we do is uh, we end up leaving these pieces out and we leave, we use these two, we use uh, these two springs still, but what we do is we come in here and recrimp the edge of this spring here where it sets down on this seat right here, where it just locks on there. It just kind of goes pop. But we leave this one still in here. That way it keeps it center from here to here and keeps it lined up on the, the spool, the PR valve, okay? When we put it all back together like that, now on this piece right here, they want you to put back flush, like Transgo wants you to do it. We will leave about 30 thousandths about what you see in here now, about, about that much, to take up for what we took these pieces here out for. And guys, it's put, it puts it right on the pressure gauge when you do that. But you don't want to mix this with this because it, you know, you could have a problem with, if you're, you don't tow nuts or anything like that. You don't get your tranny hot. You might not ever see it. But these oil field trucks, these guys here, they get down. They get them warm. They do all that stuff. So now here's our four land spool valve here. Now you can see here he grinded on that, but he almost ruined the valve. Now they talk about it in the paperwork just to barely nick that valve. They don't want you to grind all the way across it. He almost, he got cl almost close enough to run that valve. The new valve, this is a brand new one too. Uh, if you look at this new one here, they almost do it for you anyway. These new valves are cut deeper than the, the factory valve. But you can see where he almost, they want you to come through here, but not that far, guys. I mean, you can go too far and just ruin the valve. See, but they already do it right there for you. So the new valve, actually, you can just put it in a hole. Don't even have to touch it. So, pretty simple. Now, also, if you if you go with this thing, now this shift kit here could be what we we're switching over to. And and it's not because it does have a new TV valve here. It's a metal valve with a spring right here, a lot taller spring. Your transgo valve is going to have a lot longer valving area through here. So your spring's going to be shorter. Spring's going to be setting about right here. Uh, that way they have uh, more control over this valve. See, instead of being snubby like that. So that's what I like about that new kit. Of course, we have our intermediate accumulator piston here. This is the aftermarket uh, spring here. Some of them will have a spring here too uh, that does eliminate harsh downshifts uh, in the second gear and stuff when you come to a stop. If you want to put that spring in there, leave it in there. We have our band adjustment here. You can usually tell if your band's close. If you can get to tip your finger under there, you can pretty much tell that's, that's pretty dang close. Yeah, you have to remember he bought this truck off of somebody, so he doesn't really know the history of it. Now, did he, now he works at the dealership, so did he... Yeah, he works over here at one of our uh, Dodge dealerships. Okay. And you like, you know with anything, when you buy another vehicle from someone else, the maintenance is always a mystery. Yep, yep. And then we have our band adjustable strut here goes like that. 
Now this is your reverse band. If you have a, a three wrap, one, two, three like this, uh, your adjustment is three turns. Take your nut loose, turn this in about 20 inch pounds, uh, back it out three turns and you're good to go t tighten the jam nut back down. Get our shifter shaft seal out of here real quick while we're there. I actually like to glue these in. That way, uh, it's been metal to metal. Uh, it could leak, you never know. So we just glue them in. And you can see here we have a 48RE pump stator so far. You can see we have a Teflon ring right here on the end of it. They added this for converter drain back issues that Chrysler was having with these trannies. They sat for a week or so, you put it in gear and it would move. So, did it help? Sure it did. Now we just have a, a, like a factory stainless ring here. Uh, your transgo kit will come with high pressure rings. I got a used one here, give you an idea of kind of what they look like. This is stainless. Now this, if you get a gas overhaul kit, they'll be steel. If you get a diesel, they'll be stainless. So if you got a gas vehicle and you're playing around, you got rings laying around that are stainless, put them in there. Get rid of that cast. Hello? Yeah. Hopefully this pump's in good shape because our last two pumps come from California. And I've already used one. And I don't want to have to use the other one like today. Now, on all these stators, make sure you change this inner bushing right here. This right here, if you get a lot of wear here, you can have converter drain back too. We put it in gear in the morning and it won't move. Beautiful stator. Don't see that too often. Got some big old lugs on the on the pump gears here. I tell you, the gears you don't really very seldom see body wear on these gears. The only time you see it is when you know they're cranked at really really high pressure. You'll start seeing wear on the outer edges, or you'll break the the lugs off. You know, too, they went to these great big lugs and compared to the smaller ones. So, and then you'll see where here, uh, with a converter, it'll start, this gear will start cocking right through here. You can kind of see it already oh, starting to do it from here to here. So, we don't ever see any uh, torque converter uh, spacing issues on crosses or anything like that. The main thing, if the converter comes in painted, Make dang sure you get all the paint on the surface area off, around the hub, off, you know, mainly off there. Clean it up, get every bit of that paint off there before you mount it to your flywheel. And you want to look in here for any type of wear here and through here, especially from here to here. A lot of times I see a rut, there'll be a rut, a piece of metal got in here and just rutted it right here. But this looks like a really nice pump we can put some gears in. It's got the dimpled pump bushing in it still. Like I said, somebody's been into this and, and done some things to it, but it, it still can be better. Now this is your pump stator uh, selective washer here, and then you have your selective washer forward drum too. Okay. Now here we have our high gear clutch. I don't know what they're doing here. Look at, okay guys, this is this freaking me out here now. What they, <laughs> I mean, okay guys, you, do you see what I just pulled out of here? I don't know, I'm confused. They've got one, two, three, four clutches active. Oh wow, yes. Why didn't they take and put this clutch in here? Still the same clearance, and now they'd have had five clutches active. 
Maybe they didn't realize that they, they, what they did. I'm, I mean, they were going too fast. They weren't thinking. So far, everything I've seen, they've done pretty good. But to give this diesel a four clutch high gear, but just by making that mistake on putting that like that, one, two, three, four. Now I've done this, I've done them where I put an extra steel in the middle like this, in between the two center clutches like that. That way I can kill some heat in between the next, the next clutches. But that's only if I got five in there already or if I've got a drum that I just need to make clearances different and have to add a steel somewhere. I won't put the steel up against here. That's not gonna help me none. I wanna put that steel in between a plate. That way I can kill the heat from between here and this clutch. Okay, so you know, get in here and scotch bright this up really good. Looks really good, just sh some shadowing. 180 grit your drum. Put your new bushing in here. Now you got to be careful when you put these bushings in because the way this drum looks, it has these funny little notches in here. The bushing looks is flush right now, but you can drive this bushing in so far down if you're not really paying, knowing what you're doing. You could drive it down to where it's flush right here, and next thing you know, it's rubbing here. You drive it so far down in there, it starts rubbing from right here on this ledge. See, because this bushing's wide, 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 and if you notice right now. It's taking up every bit of that surface and it's not even down in there. See that? So if you take knock that bushing down towards flush here, thinking that that way fluid can go across, you just made that bushing grind right here on this land right here. And next thing you know, you're gonna grind right through here, see? And then your ceiling ring's right there. All that metal coming here will tear this, just destroy this ring. So always look at your, when you're tearing a tranny apart, Look at your bushing uh, displacements, how, how far they're uh, set down in there and stuff like that. So, of course we have our forward drum. Now we do have a, just a cast iron steel ring right here. I don't know why, I know this shift kit that he put in there come with this ring right here. And it would have been a green high pressure ring for your forward clutch. So, your shift kit will come with one. To me, this is just a stock shaft. There's nothing special about it. Got some scarf cut ceiling rings. You don't see that very often anymore. Not on the converter circuit. Now, I don't know what he's doing here neither, guys. Look at this crazy stuff. <laughs> we've got four forward clutches, but we've got a backing plate that's been machined and then added a steel. I don't understand that at all. There, there's no sense in that. Unless he had a backing plate that, uh, that he, he didn't have one and he needed something to use and, and he had this laying around on the bench. So if you can take this third gear backing plate, the factory one, put it in here like that and, and it's the same thing. Just put the snap ring back in there and now you don't have to have that junk in there like that. I'm shocked this right here wasn't rubbing down inside the shell right here because it will do it when you get them sticking out real high see i still got my four clutches in there real nice but look what he did this here physically is designed to go in a low groove third gear now if i cannot find a 48 re high gear drum and this snap ring groove is setting down in here in this drum for me to get five clutches in there i'm gonna have to have something like this I cannot use this because it's too thick. Let's just side here. Yeah, let's just this way. See, but what we would do, we would use the forward one. This is a forward, uh, forward plate that goes down in here. It's designed the same way. But what we got to do is we got to come in here and shave this down some. Kind of like what they did here. So now, this right here is the third gear drum plate that gives you five clutches when you have a low snap ring drum. See, you can do it with this too, but the problem you got, this is sticking up so high that it's gonna rub right here. Where this has been machined down, it won't rub. See, but this will, that's why we come in and cut this off right here. 
but we only use we cannot use this one or this one in a high groove drum and add seven clutches if we do no matter how you do it it's going to rub right here you can only do that in a low groove drum okay i hope y'all got that because that's really important I hope it went like this, babe. no i hopefully it didn't but <laughs> I hope everybody got that. But it's easy to, to mess up. But I add clutches in everything I do. I mean, if I can put it in there, it's going in there. Now, here we have a stock style 518 or 47, 48RE band. I don't use those. I use the, the band that's got more material on it. Still got holes to get the foot off the band. I just don't like this. This is an early three speed 727 band. You can see it says it right there, 727. So if you're getting one for your tranny, get you an early 727 band and you got a lot better band. Now, where did my washers go? I never saw you pull one out. Okay guys, either I lost my brain I'm looking for my my washers that were right there. Where'd they go? Oh, here they are. Excuse me. I was going, oh my gosh. I checked the clearance a little bit. It was kind of close. But look what they did here, guys. They stacked two of these washers together, which they locked together, which is okay. They're not going to spin on each other. And then you have your stainless washer that goes on your intermediate shaft. They do make a thicker washer. They make three steps on this. They make a thin, a medium, and then a thick. So he was, he was grasping for straws to get his clearances right in this thing. I've never done that. I never have to do that because I've got so many washers around to set these things up. But that just tells you when somebody, he probably sat back here hours trying to figure this out to get it set up. Well, at least we got a good looking steel forward planet. Because these things are getting scarce. Now, this snap ring I'm taking off right here is selective. I get. I don't have my glasses on. Dang it. Get my glasses on. Really? Okay, now, like I said, this snap ring right here is selective. Now, we've, um, it's hard to come up with them, though, but we have found we can use the 4L60E uh, snap ring if you need the thick one. The 4L60E snap ring goes right on here and works really good for your, on your, uh, off your output shaft on the 4L60Es. So you can see this here has got a really thin snap ring. Now, what we do is after we put all of our new washers and everything in here, we look... Sometimes this planet can set really far back on that spline right there. And you can take that, that slack up right there by changing the, the washers. So, or the snap ring, excuse me. Now you can see here, we have a six tab washer here. We have a new six tab washer here. Now you mainly wanna look at all your pins, make sure the gears ain't wobbling anything like that look for any chipping on both sides we do not have a washer that goes here it's just a little plastic tab put your new washer down in here grease everything up really good now this little washer right here we very seldom ever have to replace this washer this washer here i think is just there for the duration it just rides along we never see any wear that's about as bad as one you're ever going to see they just never they just never wear now you can look in here too on your shells for wear this guy don't pull no weight this truck or this is a brand new shell so they'll wear usually right here where they lock onto the third gear drum you'll see it but your sun gear you want to look on both sides make sure there ain't uh, any wear there we replaced 99.9 percent .9 of these sun gears now, and then you get in here and you start looking at your six tab washer. 
Look how bad that washer is, the load that goes on that washer, guys. And then you get your washer right here. This washer here gets all the load of the vehicle physically moving in first gear. When it shifts to second, all your load goes to this one here. But let me show you this. Look at the indention, how hard this washer is pressing on this planet right here. These are, I mean, I guarantee that's 20 thousandths or more. That's so hard, it's trying to shove that washer through that, that, that planetary pinhole right there. It, that's, I mean, you wouldn't think how that brass hangs on to oil and, and just makes that slide with 20 or 30,000 pound load behind your truck. I mean, it, these trannies still today, after 40 years of doing this, amazes me on the load that a transmission can push down the highway. It just blows me away. Now, we are going to put new washers, like I said, right here. But what's going to try to eliminate a lot of this issue is that new lube circuit we put in this thing. We're going to be dumping a lot of oil in here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, you know, first gear, second gear. Once the valve opens up totally, then it's just a full-time lube circuit no matter what. But sitting there idling a red light, it'll cool everything down more, put a lot more oil on these washers, all that type of stuff. So this isn't a billet shaft either, it's just a stock shaft. Now here's your selective washer here too. They make a yellow, a blue, a, a, a clear, a just a metal color. They make multiple uh, colors for different clearances. There we go. There we go. And we have a plastic washer here. They do make a brass one too you can put in there. We don't see any issues here with this washer. Uh, we see more issues with wear through here, uh, wear on the back of this uh, case, or on this case support right here. Now, right when your, your cooler line oil comes in uh, to a circuit, it comes right through this hole and then puts oil in here forces oil through, excuse me, through here, which will upgrade uh, that hole to a little bit bigger hole. Uh, that way we can get a ton of oil on here because there's physically no bearing. It runs on that, uh, I don't even know if this is aluminum. I've tried to drill this, guys, and, and you almost can't drill this. So, but if these, we replace every one. There's a new one there. I bought 20 of them another day. I mean, just to keep them in stock because we're having issues getting these. But then you can come in here if this looks good. Scotch brite this up. You always want to scotch brite your sprag surface right here because this is your lower sprag assembly right here that sets on there. So you want to scotch brite that up really good. There you go. And then you also want to 180 grit this. Anytime you got a band, I like to put a a coarse cut on that thing. Your reverse band's starting to get really thin at the tips. The grooves are almost totally gone. You can see how deep they are in here. They always wear at the tips and once they do the tip it goes metal to metal against your drum and starts cutting into your drum right here. So the band's got to go too. Now we're putting a triple disc in this too, Teresa, converter and everything. So we're going to be putting billet shaft too, input shaft, because he don't have one there. Right, he knows. You know? Yeah, we discussed everything. And we have he our, didn't know what he had. Yeah. Well, he does now. That's what's good about doing these videos. Uh, he can take a lunch break or whatever and look at his tranny while he's sitting at work or anything like that. and makes it so much easier that way. You want to look in here for the, pin, the clip being broke or any wobbling, spring breakage, anything like that. To reverse a uh, servo there. This is your intermediate servo. For you that don't know, a servo is what applies something. It applies a band. A accumulator accumulates something. It accumulates fluid.
Now your shift kit too will come with a Teflon ring here, a Teflon ring here, and then it will come with a standard metal ring here on the top cap. So this is your intermediate one here. A lot of guys don't even know this exists. Let me pull this out real quick. Some guys don't even take them apart that far. There's actually a spring and a seal down in here, and this physically softens your second gear shift. See, softens your downshift, but they make a kit, you can just take and drop a, a bolt down in here, a, a, excuse me, a nut, and set it, take the spring out, uh, set that up to where you can get this back in there in your snap ring and make this totally solid where you're not using the cushion anymore in this. And I mean, it brings on second gear really nice. And you take that out of there. We don't do it because it'll bring on customer complaints, but if this was a drag truck, uh, slicks all the way around or something like that, then we would do something like that on it. So. Guys, these, these trannies are amazing. Every time we come in here, it's something new every day, huh, Teresa? It, it's what we're going yeah. through. I mean, four hunters, four ladies, power glides, ultra bell. I mean, it's just laying everywhere. We're doing all these cool stuff. But guys, don't forget to subscribe. Definitely, Teresa, I want to thank you again for videoing. We got a ton of show to come. Y'all have a great day.